Hello everyone, it's Night Dagger again. I'm back with another Canon video. This time I'm going to show you how to put an auto igniter on your Canon to set off the TNT automatically as it fires. Um, I've built another Canon here. It's basically the same as the previous models of Canon except I've got it lifted up off the ground so you can see what happens underneath it. Um, here is the main lead. This runs over here to the standard igniter circuit. There's also one lead that comes down this side and then runs down to the bottom of the Canon. Um, attached to that are a bunch of inverters. This is what gives you the delay for your circuit. Uh, the number of inverters will control how long the circuit is delayed. Um, all this is is just a long string of block, redstone torch, wire, block, redstone torch, wire. That's all it is. When you add power to this one, it turns that torch off, it turns that torch on, and it continues for as long as the igniter circuit's made. Um, this is actually a fairly short igniter circuit. Runs the whole way out to here. And this is the bottom of the cannon. Uh, these three blocks here are the ones that the TNT will set on. In order to power those, we have to have a torch underneath them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out these blocks we're going to put a raised platform right here to just underneath that. On top of that we're going to put redstone torches under each one of these. Then we're going to put a little platform here to get the redstone up to it. Okay, one important thing to know about this. Due to a way the circuits are calculated, you cannot connect all of the torches from the same side. If you try, some of them will go out, some of them will stay on. So if you try to do a circuit like this, and then attach it, even though they're getting power, they're not cycling. That should not happen. So what you need to do is power it from one side here, then run another lead for the other two torches around here. Then just connect that to the same loop. Now all three torches are getting power and they're shut off. If you connect the igniter circuit with all of the inverters and those torches are still on, just add one more inverter. That'll flip the signal so that those torches are off. These torches must be off in order for this to work. If those torches are on, the second you set TNT on that, it's going to go off and things are going to end very badly for you. So we're going to come up to the top of the cannon and we're going to test the firing delay. To do that, just set a torch where you would put TNT. Those torches are on because the blocks that are on them are not powered come over here and push this, you'll see this igniter circuit flash. A little bit later, you'll see those torches flash off. When those torches flash off, that means that those blocks are getting power and any TNT on those blocks will be ignited. So you can see there's a little bit of a delay there. Looks like about two seconds, give or take. What that means for the cannon is that if you load this cannon up, then come over here and set this off. Propellant TNT goes off. That TNT goes off, gets launched, and explodes. You can tweak this delay by taking out inverters or adding inverters. Anytime you make any sort of change to this circuit, add them in sets of two. 
So if you want to make the circuit longer, just add two more inverters. If you want to take it, if you want to make it shorter, take out two inverters. So let's say we want to have it go off a little bit sooner. We're going to pull out four inverters from the circuit. Run our redstone lead back to the last live inverter. Now when we go up and fire this cannon, the propellant TNT will go off earlier, or the ammo TNT will go off earlier. Propellant TNT always goes off as soon as you touch the button. Ammo TNT is controlled by that timing loop. So push that. That TNT now goes off sooner. You can use that to tweak the delay. Um, the faster the ammo TNT goes off compared to the propellant, the shorter flight time it's going to have. Very short flight times result in the TNT usually exploding in midair. TNT will burn for about five seconds before it goes off. Always make sure that you don't add so many timing loops that this TNT is not ignited before that explodes. If this TNT does not ignite until after those propellant charges ignite, you're going to blow the front off your cannon. Um, that is the very basics of how to do that. Like I said, it's all in the inverter loop. More inverters, longer delay. Uh, remember that a charge will not go more than 15 blocks of wire, so always make sure you've got something to power it before you run out of that 15 blocks, or you're going to have a dead circuit. Always make sure that the ones that are directly underneath the TNT holding blocks are off in the natural state of the cannon. They should flip on when you push the button. Use redstone torches to test that before you load the cannon and fire it live to make absolutely sure that it's working properly. Trust me, you do not want this circuit to be failing, so test it thoroughly before you try to fire it live. Um, that is about all there is to it. This is Night Dagger signing off. Um, I am planning on doing a few more tutor tutorials in the near future. I'm going to do one on basic redstone circuitry because someone made a request for it. I'm going to do one basically showing and or your basic circuits that you use to make actual live circuits. I'm also going to show you how to add memory cells, which is kind of like RAM in a computer, but on a very, very small scale. And I'll show you some practical applications for how to do that. Until then, have fun, try not to blow up your cannons, and remember, don't build these on anything that you really like, because if you make a mistake, it's going to blow up. Have fun, see you next time.